In this video, we're going to do a quick review of standard atomic notation and Lewis dot diagrams, as well as go over ion formation. So remember that the standard atomic, note, standard atomic notation is just another way to represent the information from the periodic table um, in a different way. So this is the general form for the standard atomic notation over here. Uh, this is the symbol for the element. This is the mass of the element. And this is the um, the uh, atomic number of the element. So if uh, you want to draw the atomic notation for an element, let's say, for example, magnesium, you go to your periodic table and find what magnesium looks like in the periodic table. So we know the symbol is mg. And let's just double check what other parameters it has, what other characteristics it has. So magnesium, 24.31 uh, for the mass, and then 12 for the atomic number. So let's go ahead and write that down. 12 for the atomic number and 24.31. This is just the periodic table notation, the way it's written in your periodic table, um, but we want to write it in the standard atomic notation. So uh, what we typically do for that is we write the symbol out first, and then we put the mass on top, so 24.31, and then we write the atomic number at the bottom there. Now, generally, we write it in this form to make it a little bit easier to calculate the protons, electrons, and neutrons. So oftentimes, um, you'll see that um, we'll round. So we'll put 24, that's the nearest whole number there, and 12 um, at the bottom for the atomic number. And so it's a nice, easy way to remember how to find the uh, subatomic particles. So this is the atomic number, the bottom number over here. And so that means there's 12 protons, also 12 electrons, assuming it's a neutral atom. Uh, and then because we have a mass of 24, if you do 24 minus 12, there's 12 neutrons for magnesium. And so since you know how to find the subatomic particles, um, you're able to uh, use this uh, technique to help you find those subatomic particles. Um, in this format. So it's called the standard atomic notation. Um, that's a brief review because we've seen it already in the extensive grade 9, 10 review that we did before. Um, another way to represent elements is by using the Lewis dot diagrams. Lewis dot diagrams is a representation of the atom that displays only the valence electrons. And the reason we often do that is because the valence electrons are the ones that are involved in bonding. Um, and so those are the ones we care about the most. And so um, all you do is uh, let's say we want to draw the Lewis dot diagram for magnesium. We draw out the element symbol first, and we find out how many valence electrons it has. Remember, the group number tells you how many valence electrons an element has. So we go to our uh, periodic table over here, and uh, we look at magnesium. Magnesium is in group two, so that means that there's two valence electrons. So we can go ahead and just put one valence electron over here and one over here. And eventually we would pair them if we had to, but for now we just put the single dots like that. We'll do one more example. Let's do uh, the Lewis dot diagram for oxygen. So there's oxygen. We write down the symbol um, and oxygen is in group 16. Since it's in group 16, we know that it has uh, six valence electrons. So we can go ahead and plot those valence electrons here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's oxygen from group 16. That's the Lewis dot diagram. Um, so the oxygen still has its inner protons and neutrons and inner core electrons, but in a Lewis dot diagram, you replace all that inner stuff by the symbol and you put the valence electrons. Very useful for drawing uh, bonding models, and we'll take a look at that in more detail this year as well. Uh, so now we're going to do a quick review of ions and see how to draw ions and figure out what the charge of ions will be. So ions are essentially just atoms that have a charge. And the way they get a charge is by losing or gaining electrons. Not anything else, but electrons. So they don't lose or gain protons. They don't lose or gain neutrons. It's really by losing or gaining electrons because they are, well, very easy to access and they're very light. And specifically, the electrons that we're losing or gaining are the valence ones because they're the ones on the outside. So why do they do that? Well, because they want to become stable. They want to become happy. So elements, when um, they want to become stable, um, and the only way to really do that is by having a complete valence shell. So when the valence shell is complete or full, then they're stable. They're unreactive. So they can do that by losing electrons, 
by gaining electrons. Um, and they can also do that by sharing electrons as well. But since we're talking about ions, we're going to either lose or gain electrons. So for many common elements, they are stable with um, eight electrons. And that's called a stable octet, or you can say complete octet. Um, and we'll often call it a noble gas configuration as well. Um, but stable octet or complete octet, so I'm going to put slash complete octet. Um, and atoms will form bonds um, in order to achieve a complete um, valence shell. Okay, and bonds are really, when we say they're going to um, form bonds, let me show you an image of what that looks like over here. So here we have um, sodium and chlorine. Sodium has uh, one valence electron, and if it loses one valence electron, it'll be happy because notice that on the inside it has a stable full valence shell there. So it wants to lose that one valence electron. Uh, chlorine, on the other hand, has seven valence electrons. And to get to eight, well, it just needs to gain one more. So this chlorine will just really gain. Um, and so um, what's going to happen is the sodium will lose its electron to the chlorine. And so they'll help each other out. Sodium will have lost the electron, and now the shell below is full. Chlorine gained the electron from sodium, and now the shell is, well, complete. And now they have opposite charges and they're, they are um, attracted to each other. Uh, and that's called an ionic compound because they form a for, they, this formed by forming ions, transfer of electrons. Uh, over here, we can see that uh, everything's happy because of a share of electrons instead. We're going to focus primarily on um, the uh, ions today, but you can also have sharing that happens where you don't transfer, but the ele elements come together and just kind of put their valence electrons together and say now they have a total of eight. So um, atoms will form bonds or ions uh, to achieve a full valence shell, um, and they can do that by um, sharing. So when you share, there's no ions because you didn't transfer electrons um, or electron transfer. It's really just when you're transferring electrons um, that, you're, that you're getting ions that are forming. Uh, so let's just compare uh, nitrogen uh, that's neutral and nitrogen that's an ion. So I'm going to write out the information for nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen in our periodic table, I believe, is, so we have N7 and 14.01. I'm going to round that down to 14. Uh, and so nitrogen, if you were to draw out its um, standard atomic notation, is uh, 14 over here. That's the mass, and 7 over here. And so I'm going to write out some information. It has 7 protons. It has uh, 7 electrons if it's neutral. And then 14 minus 7 seven neutrons. But really, because there's the same number of protons and electrons, overall the charge is zero, so that's considered a neutral atom. Um, now, nitrogen will form an ion many times. Um, if we To figure out what ion it forms, we have to look at the general ion trick in the periodic table. So I want to go over here to show you that trick. Um, it really depends on how many valence electrons you have. So if you're in group one, group two, uh, you have one valence electron in group one, two valence electrons in group two. So you have to ask yourself, is it easier to lose one valence electron or to gain seven all, to go all the way to eight? It's easier to lose one. So if you lose an electron, you become positive one. Is it easier to lose two or to gain six to go to eight? Well, it's easier to lose two. So if you lose two electrons and you're in group two, you become positive two. Uh, the transition metals are a bit different the way they act, and we'll talk about that later. They can have more than one possible ion charge, so we kind of ignore those. And if you go to group 13, you basically have three valence electrons, and it's easier to lose three than to gain five um, for the metals. Uh, and then group 14, they mostly share because, you know, do you lose four or gain four? It's a bit of an iffy thing. Um, but then we get to these cases here, where let's say you're in group 15, you have five valence electrons. 
And so is it easier to lose a five or gain the three? Well, it's easier to gain three to get to your eight valence electrons than it is to lose the five. So if you gain three valence electrons, you're negative three because when you gain electrons, you become more of a negative atom because electrons are negative. You're just getting more negative put onto you. It's kind of like if you have negative thoughts, right? The more negative thoughts you have, the more of a negative person you become. But if you get rid of your negative thoughts, your electrons are negative, you become more of a positive person. Um, we have negative two over here. So if you're in group 16, you have six valence electrons. So it's easier to gain two than to lose six. Go all the way back here. So negative two. If you're in group 17, you're negative one because you had seven valence electrons. It's easier to gain one electron than to lose seven all the way back here. So you're negative one here. And if you're a noble gas, well, you don't really lose electrons very often because you already have a complete set. So that's why noble gases don't really form ions very frequently. They can still participate in bonds, but it's not as frequent as all the other elements. So we're talking about nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. It's going to um, uh, gain three electrons to get a full valence shell, so it'll become a charge of negative three. So let's go and write down its subatomic particles for the ion. So if I was writing down the uh, subatomic particle for the nitrogen ion, first of all, the name for that is nitride. You would remember that because you learned your naming um, skills for uh, ionic compounds. Uh, so that's nitride. And um, essentially, protons aren't going to change. So you'd still have the same number of protons. Okay. But what's going to change is the number of electrons. Um, nitrogen becomes negative three because it already has five valence electrons. So it's going to get three more to complete its valence shell. So now we're going to have. 10 electrons for nitrogen, and the neutrons stay the same. So what's different here is the positive and negative charges don't balance out. You'll notice you have three more negative charges than positive charges. So that's why we're negative three overall. Um, you can actually write out a standard ionic notation for the ion. It would be kind of the same idea. You'd have 14 and seven, and then you'd have negative three, or you can write three minus. Um, but that just goes to show that this is the nitrogen ion. You'll still have seven protons, you'll still have seven neutrons, but you need to add three electrons to the total number of electrons you had before. And so this is the nitrogen ion having gained three electrons. So um, to recap what we just saw here, we're gonna define two types of ions. We have cations and we have anions. Cations, I want you to remember how to spell that. There's a T in there that looks like a plus. Those are positive ions. They're ions that have formed by losing electrons. Because when you lose electrons, like I said, you become positive. So typically, it's going to be the metals that lose electrons to form cations. So for example, sodium is in group one. A one valence electron, it will lose one electron to become Na+. Um, and then anions, the way to remember that is An, just think it stands for A negative ion. Um, so anions form when you gain electrons because you're getting negative charges. And um, typically it's going to be the non-metals that will gain electrons and become anions. So for example, fluorine is in group 17. It has seven valence electrons, it gains one to become F minus one. And so we just write down the charge on top of the symbol there. So just the neutral sodium is Na, but when it loses an electron, it becomes Na plus. You don't have to put plus one, but because it's implied, but plus one there. If it was something that lost two electrons, so for example, let's say calcium, calcium loses two electrons, it becomes calcium plus two. Uh, fluorine becomes F minus. If it was something that gained two electrons, so oxygen is O, oxygen gains two electrons, it becomes O minus two or two minus. So those are anions, and then this here, these here are cations. Um, so let me just go show you that in this picture here again. Notice that uh, the metal lost the electron and became a cation, it's now a positive charge, and the non-metal gained the electron and became an, an anion, 
a negative charge. And I'm going to show you how to draw ions in the next uh, set of videos that we do. We'll just finish up this example over here, and then we'll um, we'll do some uh, drawing examples. So um, here we have sodium, uh, the neutral atom with 11 protons and 11 electrons, one electron in the valence shell. Uh, that electron is lost when you form the ion. Um, and so then you have 11 protons and 10 electrons. So the 11 protons and 10 electrons, what's winning here? Well, the positives are. So we have one more positive than a negative, so we're a charge of plus one. That's why this becomes Na plus one. Whereas over here, when you have fluorine, you have nine protons and nine electrons, that's zero um, with your seven valence electrons there. But to get a full shell, an electron comes in, um, and now we have a full valence shell over here. And so we have nine protons, but since we have an extra electron, we have 10 electrons, the electrons win by one, so we have a charge of negative one overall. This again is our cation. This over here again is our anion. Uh, the last term to really become familiar with, and we'll see this in more detail as well later on, is ionization energy and also electron affinity. Um, to lose electrons, you have to put energy in because you want the electrons to jump away. So the energy that's required to lose an electron, we call that the ionization energy. Think of it like the energy required to become um, a positive ion. Now, you can also look at something the other way. Um, when you add electrons to something, um, energy is often uh, released. So if I add an electron, energy will be released to the environment, and that's called electron affinity. Basically, the more energy that's released, the, the more that adding the electron was a good thing to do in terms of physics or chemistry. It was a nice, easy, stable thing to do. It made it more stable in the end. So the energy that's released when you add an electron to make something more stable, um, that's called electron affinity. So ionization is the energy that you need to remove an electron, um, and then uh, electron affinity is the energy that's uh, released when you add an electron. So those are two terms that are similar but also different. Um, so in the next video, we're going to take a look at isoelectronic series, and then we're going to do some examples of drawing Borath for diagrams and Lewis dot diagrams of ions, as well as standard atomic notation of ions.